News at 11. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Connor James. Reactions to nearly six hours of testimony by former special counsel Robert Mueller are predictably mixed. President Trump is calling it a great day for Republicans and for him personally. Democratic leaders say they hope the American people were really listening when Mueller testified. He did not clear the president of wrongdoing. Nicole Killian is on Capitol Hill with the latest. President Trump took a victory lap Wednesday after Robert Mueller's testimony before two congressional committees. This was one of the worst performances in the history of our country. The 74-year-old former special counsel primarily kept his testimony confined to his 448-page report, but Democrats tried to get him to set the record straight. The president has repeatedly claimed that your report found there was no obstruction and that it completely and totally exonerated him. But that is not what your report said, is it? Correct. It is not what the report said. And what about total exoneration? Did you actually totally exonerate the president? No. Under Department of Justice policy, the president could be prosecuted for obstruction of justice crimes after he leaves office, is correct? True. Some Republicans accused Mueller and his team of bias. You hired a bunch of people that did not like the president. And you must be aware by now that six of your lawyers donated $12,000 directly to Hillary Clinton. I have been in this business for almost 25 years. And in those 25 years, I have not had occasion once to ask somebody about their political affiliation. Mueller passed on some questions or asked for them to be repeated. And at times, he seemed to struggle to keep up. Uh, that went a little fast for me. House Republicans say Mueller's testimony was nothing new and it's time to move on. This should be the end of the chapter of this book that we put America through. But Democrats are still wrestling with whether to pursue impeachment of the president. We want to have the strongest possible case to make a decision as to what path we will go down. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says Democrats are working through the courts to try to get the White House to cooperate with their ongoing investigations. Nicole Killian, CBS News, Capitol Hill. House Judiciary Committee Chairman Gerald Nadler says his panel will file lawsuits this week to obtain more information about the Mueller report and enforce a subpoena against former White House counsel Donald McGahn. Fairly quiet night across the region. Not too much been going on today. The nighttime hours will be the same. Cool and crisp already across the region. You're seeing outside the WIMT studios live right now and things are pretty calm across our part of the area over on US 119 Whitesburg Pine Mountain. I had some crews up there working earlier today and then when night fell they went home and the nighttime settled in and things have been again fairly quiet. Not too much going on. High pressure really dominating the forecast. You see some rain trying to dive south into parts of West Virginia, but all that dried up before it got to us. Visibility not too bad yet. Could be some patchy dense fog a little bit later on. We'll see temperatures already into the 50s in Jonesville over in Southwest Virginia there, 63 in Wise. Some lower 60s across the Cumberland Valley, some upper 60s there on top of some of those ridges and in the cities where there are more of a little bit of a concrete and asphalt there. So temperatures on dew points, very mild. Anything below 65 is very comfortable. So we're in good shape there. Day planners, we into the nighttime hours. I guess we'd call it the night planner at this point. We'll see temperatures drop, drop into the mid 50s and then sunshine will be back again tomorrow. I have that full forecast coming up here in just a few minutes. Connor. All right, thank you, Brandon. A crash in southern Kentucky has resulted in the death of a teenager last night. A 16 year old girl was the passenger in a pickup truck and died at a Somerset hospital. Police suspect alcohol was a likely factor. A pickup truck ran off the road and smashed into several trees. An 18 year old was driving. The girl was her, his, her passenger. Police say no charges have been filed. They say they are waiting on a blood test result. And a Kentucky man accused of killing two people at a Kroger store was declared competent to stand trial today. Gregory Bush, who is white, is accused of killing two black people at a Kroger in Jefferson Town last year in what has been deemed a hate crime. Bush was found not competent to stand trial in May. He was ordered to undergo 60 days of forced medication at the state's correctional psychiatric facility. 
And a recent study from the Washington Post shows pharmacies in Johnson County received more than 24 million pain pills between 20, 2006 and 2012. ValueMed Incorporated led the state between those years by receiving more than 10 million prescription pain pills after government crackdowns on many clinics in our region. Police say many addicts are changing the way they get high. Johnson County Sheriff's Deputy Tim Clark says this has even changed the way he does his job. You know, years ago when I first started, um, you know, none of that was around. You know, you didn't see any needles unless it was somebody that actually was diabetic or something. Deputy Clark says he does not blame the local pharmacies for the crisis. We reached out to Value Med Incorporated, but they declined to comment. If you know, if you want to know your county statistics, we have the link to the original study on our website, WYMT.com. And the special session is over, and Governor Bevin's pension relief bill is now law. The Senate passed the bill this morning. It offers some relief for regional universities and quasi-governmental agencies like health departments, mental, hair, mental health centers, and domestic violence shelters. Republicans standing firm in their belief this isn't a perfect bill. It doesn't fix the problem, but is the right first step. Meanwhile, Democrats are adamant in their concerns. This will take away what employees have earned. We are ending the state's partnership with its employees. And maybe it's not obvious today, but I think if that happens, it's the beginning of the end for state pensions in this state. Attorney General Andy Bashir has threatened legal action over this legislation. At this point, a lawsuit has not been filed. And a Pike County Central student lost her battle to leukemia today. 16-year-old Shaylee Cobb died this morning. We've told you about her battle with cancer before. She had been searching for a bone marrow donor. Donor. Many in the county have rallied around Cobb through the years. Funeral arrangements have not yet been announced. We will bring you those once we know them. And coal miners protested in D.C. today. Black lung disease, which stems from decades of exposure to coal dust, claim lives for some of their loved ones. They want Congress to raise the tax on coal production that helps cover the cost of care and disability back to where it was last year. Patty Ambergy, the widow of a coal miner, was one of the people there. It's important to every miner that is walking through these aisles. The Kentuckians on the trip also met with staffers from Senator Ram Paul's office. A spokesperson says they are exploring ways to assist, but did not respond to our questions about specific proposals. And the 2019 Harlan County Safety Days Mine Competition is underway. 13 groups of miners took to the field today from four different states. Miners from Illinois, West Virginia, Virginia, and Kentucky. Officials at the competition say the competition means more to the miners than simply a title or a trophy. They're here showing their dedication on the field. And, you know, it's sun's out, it's hot, and they don't care. They, they want to do this. So if there's a disaster, they're ready to go. The mine competition ends tomorrow. And a federal appeal, appeals court has thrown out a lawsuit filed by the families of 78 men who were killed in a 1968 mine explosion in West Virginia. The ruling today by the 4th U.S. Circuit Appeals affirms a 2017 ruling by a federal judge. The men died after an explosion ripped through the Farmington No. 9 mine. And Air Force One touched down in West Virginia Wednesday evening. The president greeted supporters before being escorted to a waiting limo. President Trump will attend a private fundraising event in Wheeling. The event is being hosted by Robert E. Murray, president and CEO of Murray Energy. Meanwhile, some in the area protested the president's arrival. Behind a banner paid for by the Ohio Democratic Party, the workers said President Trump had broken promises to them. They say the president promised to bring their jobs back to Lordstown two years ago and has not delivered. Well, if you have a car seat in your vehicle, have you checked it lately to see if it's properly installed? London Fire and Police Departments are helping people do just that by hosting a free car seat check. WYMT's Madison Pergram was there and has more. Buckling up is not the only thing to think about when getting your child into the car. Just because you have a car seat, that doesn't mean that they are safe. Consider this. It has to be the right car seat for the right child. Uh, such as for their needs, the height and weight. London Fire and Police officials are getting involved in making sure that happens. You want this right here? 
to usually stay about chest level. Teaching along the way. See that right there? That's that's all you need right there. We're trying to educate people to um, that way they can install the car seats on their own and have a little bit of self confidence and ability to install that car seat on their own also. Listen to this startling statistic. Officials estimate 95% of Kentucky children do not properly ride in their car seats. Was not even aware that my car seat was out of date. For Karen Dowdy. I mean, I had bought it, you know, just for my grandkids and hadn't really paid any attention to the date on it. The 15 minutes it takes is worth it. I mean, it, it's free and like I said, it doesn't take that long. All for the safety of her grandkids. In London, Madison Pergram, WYMT Mountain News. The London Fire Department will check your car seat any day. Just make sure to call and make an appointment beforehand. Well, three businesses in Letcher County have recently switched to using solar energy. Homes Incorporated got their first energy bill since the switched switch last month. The executive director says the organization saved almost $1,000 on the bill compared to June of last year. The organization projects to have the installation of panels paid off within nine and a half years with the money they're saving. And I was uh, uh, very pleasantly surprised to get our first bill, uh, which was $975 less than the bill of the same month, the same billing days as the year before. Long said it only took eight days for his crew to install the panels under the supervision of a solar company from Danville. Apple Shop and Hemp Hill Community Center in Letcher County have also made the switch to solar energy. And a little league in Knott County wrapped up with their final game tonight, but this league is not your typical group of players. I went up to the ballpark to learn more. There's just something about baseball. The sounds, the energy, the sheer fun. It's all those things that just make us feel normal. Yeah, I kind of found it, I guess you'd say so. And that's exactly what this league is doing. If they're more than capable to be able to hit a fast pitch, we'll throw a pitch to them and we just, we kind of just go with it. This league in Knott County is for kids with special needs, an issue heavy on the heart of Joshua Huff. You see his son Zaid has Angelman syndrome. And me and my wife have talked many different times about how that we uh, would love to see some them be able to participate in baseball. He wasn't alone in this feeling. The doctors always told us that he would never be able to play sports. Stephanie Hall's son Skyler has stickler syndrome, meaning Skyler will lose some of his senses. His vision's already going. But this... He can experience what other nine-year-old little boys do, you know. Let's him just experience life and also kind of dominate the field. Now that's him just hitting a single. He's not one to brag, but... Tell him about your two home runs. Two home runs. It really is just a chance to wind up a pitch and unwind on the field. The kids, they have fun, but the parents, I think they have more fun too. <laughs> it's, uh, it's no greater feeling than to be able to hear the laughs and the smiles of these kids. 23 kids play currently. The team hopes to continue and grow next year. No one in the league pays for anything. It's all sponsored. Well, coming up at 11, following safety concerns, Boeing just had its worst financial quarter in the company's 103-year history. Here at home, it looks like another cool and crisp night before another beautiful day tomorrow. I'll have the latest forecast in just a few minutes.